What's going on, everybody? Welcome into a special edition of Jack Ramsey's. This is a breakdown edition, and it will require audience participation. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different. Uh, you'll probably notice some changes in the layout and how everything's kind of looking and working. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be uh, hopefully air-free. I, I ran a test run with it earlier. We'll uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. I'll let everybody uh, kind of kind of wiggle their way in. Uh, this is, I think this is going to be really fun. I, I genuinely do. Um, I've got the, uh, all of the defensive possessions lined up from last night's game against the Spurs. I've also got all of Jeremy Grant's pick and roll possessions defensively this year that have resulted in a score. So that's something I thought would be interesting to take a look at. Uh, the great thing about this is, um, with the video access on Synergy that I have, uh, and shout out the folks at Synergy, um, shout out my guy, Matt, at Synergy, who makes it all possible, um, I can take a look at a lot. Like, we can take a look at Damian Lillard and Anthony Simon's pick and roll. Uh, we can take a look at uh, Portland struggling with spot-ups. We can take a look at how they handle isolations, how they handle post-ups. We can take a look on the offensive side of things, and how good the Portland Trailblazers are on offense. Like, there's... <coughs> excuse me. There is a lot of stuff there that we can kind of go into. Um, and I think a lot of it, after I kind of get going from... Uh, after we get done with, you know, this first kind of version of this, I'll have a better understanding. Uh, for those that... Uh, you know, obviously, this isn't going to play real well on the podcast, so this isn't going to drop on the podcast because it's uh, going to be heavy, heavy, heavy video. Um... But as always, like, rate, review, subscribe. If you're watching here live or you're watching on the replay, the cool thing about this is this is kind of evergreen. You can kind of come back and revisit this. Uh, and I hope to do more versions of this and kind of things that we can focus in and on, hone in on. So um, let's try this. Let's try this and see if it works, okay? Please work. Please work. Please work. <laughs> All right, three, two, one, ta-da! All right, cool, 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 cool. Uh, on my screen, it's working. You should see uh, what a minute into the Spurs game here. In these first couple of plays, uh, there's not a ton I really wanted to kind of go over in this. But one of the things that I did want to talk about is just kind of in general. I'm gonna. The cool thing about this is that I figured out how to do this, and I can stop, pause, play, draw on the screen. Look at that. Ooh, ah, telestrate. Wee. Uh oh. Danny learned how to do things. Uh, it'll it'll break horribly. I know. Um, but this is. I want to. I wanted to really focus in on the things. Um, and you'll see that these clips, these are all from Synergy. They're all stitched together. Some are a little bit shorter, some are a little bit longer, and you can see kind of some of the imperfections that kind of come with stuff like this. It's because it's prone to human error. Uh, but we'll kind of roll things up here. Um, just kind of right out of the gate, San Antonio's first offensive possessions led to some awkward rebounds. Kick out, move to the corner, unset defense, scramble play on, on – uh, on an offensive rebound. And again, you're, you're going to see a lot of this. And I don't think there's a ton to gain from this. But I wanted to get into this next play because I thought this was really important. Well, not really important. I just thought it was important in the sense of as we roll this along, I want you to watch Josh Hart as he sees Keldon Johnson. And he knows instinctually everything that is going on right here. Right out of the gate, there's a pet play, and Josh Hart knows it. He has it snuffed out immediately. He's like, okay, I see this. Ball is coming down opposite side. They're going to attack here. Boop, boop. And Keldon Johnson, his eyes are this way. I already know what's happening here. And what's going to end up happening here is that Keldon Johnson is going to look for probably DHO handoff action up top. With Bassey, who's coming in here, he'll eventually get there, set the pick. And what Josh does here, this is I think this is really great, and this doesn't 
this doesn't ever get picked up in games when you're watching it really live in the sense of the little things. Like, oh, look at what Josh does here. Now, as I roll this forward, boop, boop, boop. hey, Josh immediately recognizes he's going to try to deny this action right here. He is going to come up face guard. No, 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 no. Sir, I am not going to let you get into this already because I know that this empty space right here is where Mr. Bassey is going to go to and s try to set this pick and let this action go. As we roll it forward, boop, 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 boop. You can see Josh Hart already sets, resets this action. Ah, this doesn't look good, and Trey Jones knows it. He's like, well, I got Simons right here. His eyes are up. Nurk's at the free throw line, playing drop underneath. He's there to help. There's no action here where Keldon Johnson catches the ball in this space where this is useful, and Josh Hart knows that by playing over the top. Okay? So, as we roll it forward, what does Keldon Johnson do? Well... He goes, well, let's go ahead and flip it. And now Bassey's back up top, and they're just going to reset it and turn it into a DHO. So Josh playing underneath it now. Curl back over the top. Little DHO action. Clear the list off the top. Here's what's important, right? We always talk about knowing your personnel, KYP. We know that Keldon Johnson is an iffy three-point shooter. It's still something he's working on in his game. Doesn't have the reputation so much as a shooter. So what does Josh do? He fights under the screen. This really doesn't happen too much in the NBA when we're talking about wings, especially like a 20-point per game score like Keldon Johnson. But this is, again, knowing your personnel. So Josh fights under, and he knows that if he takes a three, it's a win. It's, it's fine. It's total help. But he's got Nurk underneath, hello, playing again in that drop coverage. And I want to make sure everybody knows like what, what ends up playing. Or he, Nurk is playing what's called the right at the nail. And the nail is literally where Yusuf Nurkic's foot is, right here. That's the nail. That's weird. It doesn't show up on the screen. The way I'm drawing it on the screen is not showing up for you guys, so... Let me try drawing a little bit whiter. See if that works. Eh, that doesn't work either. Draw it up here. That's closer. Anyways, I don't know why it's drawing awkwardly. That's where you're going to see most most bigs playing drop. About six feet below the three-point line. Okay? And so Nurk's basically playing center field. Just catching right here, right? Watch what happens. Josh funnels, funnels, funnels. But because Nurk is lifted... So that's, he's lifting in the, all of this space right here. He's all wide open. And that is a metric crap ton of space for Kelvin Big Body Johnson and his stupidly long, lanky arms to drive into. Now, Nurk realizes this, flips his hips, like, I don't have to worry about Bassey where he's at. Let me drop and help. And this is where being a 7-foot, 300-pound dude is helpful. Kelvin, to his credit reads this, Bassey dives, broop, fills in all this space, right? All that space. Six feet of space right there. Jeremy Grant has now come down. He's sagging in. He's the help defender. He's not worried about Keldon Johnson trying to fire this pass over the top because that's not going to work. But he also realizes Bassey is right here and he does what he's supposed to do and gets back into play and watch. Ball is caught high. Now, I don't know if Bassey intentionally did this. But as he catches it high, typically when you catch the ball high, you want to keep it high. Right? What you don't want to do is bring it down here where all the hands are. And yet, <laughs> if we roll it forward, do -do 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 -do, he brings it under. And in doing so, the help... Jeremy Grant, who is going to get who's a good weak side help defender, and Nurk, who is now a little bit out of position, they both reach high, which is fine. But Bassey makes a play, it's a step through, and it's a finish. And what's interesting about this, what's interesting about this play is that right there, somebody's saying, oh, Josh got beat. 
Or did Keldon Johnson just make a play? That's what part of what you have to weigh with this stuff is does Keldon Johnson just make a, a heady play? He draws the double. He dr- draws the help. Nurk gets over, gets big, takes away the shot. And Keldon Johnson makes a nice drop off off Bassey reading the open space on the floor as a roll man. Jeremy Grant has sagged in. He is helping. He goes to contest what looks like it's going to be a quick shot from Bassey. But Bassey stays down, goes under, and finishes on the other side. Is that a bad defensive play? That's the question I'm asking. Is that Was the defense here bad? Josh Hart n- knew what they were looking to do and originally gets into a ball denial. Forces them to reset and flip the action. Now as it comes back the other way, let's, let's watch what, on full speed. Now that you kind of know what's happening here. Okay, it comes back. You flip it back the other way. Goes under. Kelton Johnson hooks him a little bit. Makes a good play. I don't, I don't think the process is broken there. I think the process is fine and the offense made a better play. And when we're watching stuff like this, I'm sitting here. You know what? I just realized I have to do this so that you guys can flip this back over and see this. Let me go ahead and watch it at full speed again. As they get back under, is this is there anything wrong with this? And my answer is no, the process not isn't broken. Thrandy says this that all happens so fast. Yes. Yes, that is exactly it. Yeah, I I know I'm a little bit behind, guys, as far as the video didn't come back up. I'm I'm replaying it now. As I said, the uh I'm going to work through a few issues here as I'm I'm pushing a lot more buttons than I normally do. (laughs) And I'm going to play it again, though. Let it just kind of go all the way through. And the interesting thing here is that Josh Hart gets the overplay. Nurk is in a perfect position to catch. He stops the drive. Kelvin Johnson just makes a good play. That's it. Fundamentally, that's one of those things where you just kind of have to go, okay, and over the course of a night, over 100-ish possessions, sometimes that's going to be the case. Now, sometimes coverage does get blown, and we'll get some of that here in, in, in the video as we go along. And I'll probably just kind of let it play and talk through some stuff and answer some questions here in the chat as we go along. Because uh, I want to get to some plays, or we can pivot and go straight to the Jeremy Grant film. <laughs> it's your guys' call. Um, I'm just kind of freelancing here. Uh, the... The opportunities that, that kind of come through each and every game, I think it's important to contextualize and understand what this stuff does and what this stuff means. So and we'll just kind of let it keep rolling here through the first quarter. We'll get right now. Uh, again, Nurk, we'll just highlight the things that are happening here, okay? Nurk, bloop, playing center field, right? Okay, that's normal. Defense of the corner, sucked in. It's Damian Lillard saying, I'm not worrying about Kitty Bates Jobs all that much. He's a step removed from the paint. Josh Hart, eh, we're, we're helping out a little bit, but at the same time, you're, that space is also being occupied by Jeremy Grant, right? So you're really not worried about the attack coming through here because Josh is only a step away. Nurk is playing center field. Jeremy Grant, if Simons gets screened up here, if this player lifts and screens, it's probably going to be a quick switch where Grant is in also now stepping into this area. So, I, I can't remember what happened in this play, so I'm just going to let this one play now. So, kick to the middle, and this is, again, this is the simple things to watch. I'm not necessarily watching the ball. I'm watching the ball as it go, as it moves around, and then my eyes are looking at what the other guys defensively are doing. So as the ball goes to Bassey, watch Nurk immediately. Bloop! He is not looking. Let's roll this back a couple seconds. Yusuf Nurkic is not looking at Bassey. He does not care about Bassey taking threes. What he does see is as Jones is getting off the ball here to Bassey is that space we talked about earlier. So Nurk is 100% preparing to drop and play in there. Space, 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 right? 
takes two steps back, knows that pick that we talked about earlier on Simons is coming. Bloop, there's the step up. There's the screen, right? Okay. As we roll forward, there wasn't a switch. Dun, dun, dun. Interesting. So, we get the... It's in it. The funny thing is, it's not even really a screen. It's at most a brush, maybe a ghost. And as that happens, so ghost screen is a screen that's not actually a screen. Ghost screen is a screen, that, again, in this video, where it's really just going past somebody and you're creating space. So we'll run this through again. As he steps up from here, and it's, it's less a screen and more the possibility of screen and forcing Simons to go over the top, but it also forces Grant to step in and it opens this channel that was tight with Grant in it, but now with Grant vacated, and I run it forward, boop, 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 there's more space and there's a timing window. They created that channel here and the channel here by vacating one player here and then having Jeremy Grant follow him here. I know it's a lot kind of going on on the screen, but these little pockets in here are what create the opportunity for the player to go from around the top create the passing window, and create the lane to catch on the backside. So as we launch it forward, just pinpoint precision passing. Timing, repetition. Nurk standing tall, not thinking about a guy coming through on the back cut. Ant probably should have been in better position here, a little bit tighter to Trey Jones. The ghost screen makes him flare a little bit. Somebody said something earlier about how uh, Thrandy said everything happens so fast. This play is predicated on, on forcing a defense to make decisions. Does, or do Simons and Grant switch? Does Nurk help? What, what decisions are made in a snap, okay? From the time Bassey catches the ball, there is 18 seconds on the shot clock. The pass comes at 17 seconds on the shot clock. In a second or less, those three actions have taken place. The pass, the flare, and the cut. And less than a second later, the ball's in the back of the hoop. So let's run it through all the way. Boom. Are there things the Blazers could have done there better? Yes. Yes. Ant could have been more present in his trailer. They could have switched it. Nurk could have helped a little bit more. Without knowing the exact scheme and how they wanted to play those particular players, I don't know where the blame falls. But also, dip your cap to the Spurs. Why? Why? Because they ran a hell of a set with precision and timing. Thrini, how, how, how come Nurk being up on the ball doesn't, uh, doesn't help? It's about where his feet are. Um, let me go back here real quick. Uh, let me go back one clip. Blow it up. Okay. So, let's go back to the video. Because of where Nurk is, again, Nurk's seven foot tall, 300 pounds. He does not... How do I phrase this without sounding bad? It's not that he's a traffic cone. Like The thing is, like you have to get around him. But what he is playing for here are guys driving. And now Nurk has very good hands in passing lanes. And, he, and not just that, he's very good at at getting deflections and knocking the ball away on guys. That's actually one thing he does incredibly well, particularly among centers. But watch what happens. He's dropping in. He's looking around, assessing what's the, what are the threats here? 
And I don't think he expects, because the, pa- the, the, the scouting report on Charles Bassey is not pinpoint passer. So he's not a, he's got his hands out, but he's standing tall. And from where he's at and the angle they create, it only creates this one pocket. Again, right here, right? And, it's, I mean, obviously it's different than, yeah, let me go ahead and it's actually on the axis behind Grant here and in front of Nurk here. And what Nurk is doing here is basically playing center field. And when it happens, he's literally a step away. Because Nurk, if you're looking, is center line of the floor. Right? If you're, well, God, the drawing doesn't, doesn't do that any justice. That's closer to where it is, right? Okay? He's center line. The pass is more here. So by taking that by being there, he has to take that step here to cut it off. And if you run it forward, look at the angle he's at. Look where the ball's already at. He can't get his hips. I guess it helps if I turn my cursor on. There we go. Uh, he can't get his hips back in the play. Let me go ahead and roll that back. Because as right here, that one step, that's actually three or four feet. And so he can't get into that to take that away. Right? Little things. Little things, little things, little things. Alright, let's let this roll through for a couple more, see if there's anything else interesting here, because this is just the first couple of plays. Here we go. There's a couple different actions going on here. And this is a little, little help with some of the little bit of terminology stuff, right? What was interesting about this game is the Blazers did not run a ton of zone. I think they only recorded four or five uh, plays of zone, if I remember last night. Going off the top of my head. But right away, there's not a lot going on here at the top of the floor, right? Hi, Trey. How you doing, bud? He's right here. But there's a whole bunch of space. And you're not worried about up here. But there is a little action going on over here. So if you're talking about what I'm watching during the game, this is what I'm watching. Is this stuff over here? And is there what's going on on the backside of the play? You know, Basically, the entire defense is lifted up to here, with the exception of Jeremy, who's going to be lifted up. So that means the baseline of your defense is all going to be right here. So there's all this space. I don't know what this play is, but there's all this space behind the defense. All right? Okay. Let's see what the Spurs are looking to set up here. Oh, look, it's an overplay. Da 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 da. They anticipate it. Excuse me, the, the, the Spurs get a little bit of an action here, and they fake it. They make you think that the lift is coming. He's going to come over the top of the stagger screen. He's going to come here. He's going to step into a three. This is something the Blazers do for Damian Lillard all the time. It's tried and true, right? (laughs) But they catch Jeremy on the overplay. He's thinking, I'm going to need to get through one, two screens before he gets to here. Right? Wrong. (laughs) As you see it, back door again, timing play. Jeremy is already beat. Josh has realized it. Oh, I got to help here because look at that space. There's nothing there. And the weak side help is six foot two Damian Lillard. Not a lot of help. Not a lot of help. Anton, I'm waiting for you to accidentally draw something in a perfect. I've come really close a couple times. I'm quick on my erase just because of that. <laughs> so let's look forward. Hey, doesn't matter on the overplay. Why? Because Josh Hart recognizes it, and he gets back in front, and Yusuf Nurkic, 
again, playing center field, is able to deny that. Why? Probably because he got burned by the back cut earlier. Learning, right? Okay, let's let it roll fuller, further. Get back into the second part of the set. What, what do you see here? This looks like a little bit of split action. You're going to get a little a screen here, and I'm guessing Bates Jop is probably going to come here. You're probably going to get a pop out here. He'll fade to the corner here. I don't know. That's my guess. Let's find out more. We got none of it. it. Ended up turning into a reset. They they go away from that action. They don't get the lift. They don't get the back cut. Why? Well, the back cut is taken away because Simons recognizes it and there's communication between him and Dame. So they see the screen. Simons, bloop. Dame, bloop. Cross each other over. Get out of the space. Ant plays underneath. Josh is there for leverage. Richardson can't do anything unless he cuts back door. Okay. And now they're looking again. They're looking for that overplay. They're looking to see if they can get Jeremy again. Jeremy learned from earlier in the possession. He's not going to hop up here. Why? Because he's not worried about it, and he knows he doesn't have any help here. Because he can see Nurk is all the way up here. He's not at the level. He's not all the way up. But he's playing more contained. But that means if Jeremy sees that, he knows that he doesn't have that help on the backside or underneath. Arms out, hands out. Ten seconds. Again, simple but subtle thing. Ant knows Trey Jones isn't much of a shooter or a reluctant shooter. This is scouting. It's for all of the game plan, scouting report stuff. This is where you see it coming into effect. Coming... He, he knows Trey Jones is going to come off in this DHO screen, some kind of action. He could come here, grab the ball, and come back, and it would put Ant in a disadvantageous position if he does clear under, because then he can get re-screened on the backside. But he's willing to take that gamble because Trey Jones shooting a off-the-bounce three is something you can live with. So Ant flares under. Now Nurk knows, okay, we're getting later in the clock. I'm going to trail and follow into the paint, and I'm going to offer some resistance because they also know that Damian Lillard is still the backside help. So if we roll this back still, they know that one of Dame or Ant is going to be here in this situation with how they were set up because that switch is taking place, right? Help, bloop, bloop, bloop. Now recover and get back. They still know Dame is help, and now he's got six foot eight Kata Bates drop on his back on six two. So Nurk's like, I gotta get back. I gotta make sure I'm, my presence is here. Rap pass, six two, six eight, good finish. So let it play through the entire possession with everything that we just watched and understand what's going on. Okay? Little overplay, get the switch. Jeremy Grant, recover. Nurk steps up above the level. Little ball denial. Hands out in the passing lanes. Ant steps up, goes under. Nurk comes to help. Drop pass. Kata Bates jump, scramble. Step through, up and under. Spurs, Spurs points. Again, taking a look at that, you see how many actions are taking place. How many things are going on for the Blazers defensively? How many things are going on offensively for the Spurs? What in there makes you say this guy got cooked or this guy got beat. If you looked at that play, who is responsible? Who who lost their battle there? Who was the one that didn't get it done? Or is that just that's part of a hundred possession game? The six foot eight guy scored over the six foot two guy. Would you like Dane to be more resistant? Sure. Would you like him to be 6'6"? Yes. Getting more tall guys is usually better. But when you go through this stuff, possession by possession, you start to understand what the Trailblazers are doing and what they're getting away from or not getting away from. And it's just... I think it helps frame things where they 
with what's actually going on. Okay? I'm going to flip this out here real quick. And I'm going to go to the Jeremy Grant video. Because I know a bunch of people wanted to see this. So what I have is um, a collection, I believe, of all of the... I think there's 37 clips of all of the clips that Jeremy Grant got has been scored on per Synergy. Okay? Okay, and this is one that I saw people called out Jeremy Grant for. And I, I really want to go through this one because um, there's a lot here, okay? So let's understand personnel. Who, what, when, where, why. MVP, this guy, he's over here. He currently has Shaden Sharp on him. Interesting. What's going on here? Dame, weak side. Josh Hart, strong side. Nurk, above the free throw line. Jeremy Grant, picking up the ball a foot above the three-point line. Okay? So that's, 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 our, that's our table setter. Let's, let's run stuff through now. Okay? Little bit of a dive action. Little ghost screen. It looks like Gordon's going to come and set this. Nurk, so what, what you see here is Gordon looks like he's going to set this screen on the back side. I've got to make sure it's drawing on this, on your guys' screen correctly. On the back side here, so it, it would, in theory, allow Highland to turn the corner and then get down this way, right? But what Gordon does is bloop, bloop, and that little ghost screen action is going to create space. As he ducks in, Aaron Gordon has been whooping your ass on dunks and cuts all game. So, er, Nurk drops down, Dame tags in. So you get Nurk here. No, sir, not letting this happen. Dame takes his three steps in from here. No. And even then, Aaron Gordon, so big, so strong, athletic, he's still got his hand up like, hey, guys, woohoo! <whistles> put it here, please. Put it here. I can go get it. But they don't. Okay. Run, run it. Highland loses it. Ah, crap. I got to get back into it. Okay. Now the defense is a little bit more extended. Now, Jeremy Grant probably knows he's on an island, understanding what's going on, and he knows he has the MVP over this side. Okay. Please work. There we go. Gets the ball resets. Okay. As he feels this, I want you... I'm going to run this back real quick. Before the shot. Look at where Grant is already picking up Bones Highland. Okay? Look at where he's already picking up. He knows he's a threat. He knows he's a, a deep pull-up three threat, but he also respects the living hell of his drive. Bones Highland is one of the quickest dudes in the league with the ball. Terrifyingly fast. Now, before you see the shot or anything else, what I want you to watch from Bones is how low to the ground he shoots off the ball here. Boom! That right there, that screams, I'm going to the rim. This low shift inside out, shoulders down, wide step, boom! Watch Grant, false step back, Oh, shit. <laughs> he knows what's coming. He knows he's that, he, that ball's getting picked up. He closes out. Look at where he's at. Is this a bad closeout? Look at where he's shooting. He's shooting at 32 feet. Cash. Run it through. Yo, sets it over, gets the ISO, goes screen, gravity, pull, reset, Brown, back to Highland, boom! Watch it again. Explode out, boom! Sits him. Cash. Is that a bad defensive play from Jeremy Grant? Is that a bad defensive play from Jeremy Grant? Or is that a hell of a shot from Bones Highland? Both? I see people say, he's getting cooked by guards. Yes, that is getting cooked 
by an elite level move. It's a 32 foot pull up three, step back off the bounce. If you're forcing guys into that, if you're forcing a bench guard into that shot, well done. A contested step back fadeaway three at 32 feet. Listen, people don't want Damian Lillard walking into threes. They Sometimes you just live with shot making. And in that Denver-Portland game, mistakes were made. Denver scored 121 points. I am not saying the defense was flawless. But anyway, there are things that could, in that possession alone, that could be done better. I am not refuting that. But what is happening there is great shot making. Great shot making. That's what that is. Jeremy takes away the drive because he of Bones' speed. And he wants to limit that opportunity. Evan James says, Lillard, Lillard probably gives opposing teams nightmares of the scouting report. Yes! That is, that is ultimately my point. For all of this, the Blazers get cooked by point guards or Jeremy Grant gets beat by this. Think about the defenders that Damian Lillard has gone up against in the past six games. He's cooked every single one of them. Are they bad defenders? Are these teams all bad defenses? Well, the Spurs are awful. <laughs> but Kelton Johnson is a good defender. Like Vassell has got like the, the tools. Trey Jones, not a great defender. He tries. He's not dumb. It's There's so much of this that happens night in and night out. And ultimately, we want to take a look at one possession. Like if you ask Jeremy about the very last play on Jamal Murray, I bet you $1,000 he'll say he screwed up. That he made a mistake. That I should not have bit on the hezzy. But at the same point, at the same time, in that moment right there, John, uh, I think Jamal Murray had 13, 12 or 13 points in the quarter, or 11 points in the quarter, and he finished with 14. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, so don't crucify me if I'm getting it wrong. But Jamal Murray had been cooking in the fourth quarter after a, a poor first half. And so that's resonating in your head, and it's Jamal Murray. And even if you remind yourself, you make mistakes. Jeremy Grant made a mistake in that moment. Okay, let's, let's roll through a few more of these um, from Jeremy. These are all defensive plays from Mr. Grant uh, as a pick-and-roll ball handler. Oh, this one's actually great. Um, it's just good basketball. This, this, was, this was just heady stuff by Nemhard. Ah, dang it. Let me uh, go back here. Bloop, blow it up. Little stack set, a little screen to screen to re- relocate. It had some some Spain feelings to it, but you get right away, since we kind of know some of the language right now, you get a little back screen on Jeremy Grant, Ant steps up. This almost creates a pistol look. Um, if you're familiar with the NFL or college football and how they stack, and in doing so, you create these lanes immediately, both here and here. Right? On both sides. It, it, it allows for spacing. And that's a big thing. Because look, you're spaced out here. You're spaced out here. Run, he's going to, I'm assuming, roof a place here. And he's lifting here. And you're left with this absolute cavern to work with. All right? So you get here. You get the little screening action here. <coughs> Excuse me. For Buddy Heald. Heald doesn't look like he's all that interested in it. Ant fights through. There's a Ant turns his back here. I'm not really sure what's happening. Josh is like, uh, I, it's Buddy Heald out there. I got to get out there. Because Ant's kind of flipped his hips here. Isn't sure where to help. This is a communication issue, right? You want to talk about a play where things went wrong? This is a communication issue. Who's got who in this particular situation? You've got three. You got one, two, three Blazers. You've got one, two, three pacers, right? You think you should be in good shape. Wrong. <laughs> As we roll forward, that pass fake from Nemhard is going to sell. Bloop. Josh sits up. He's like, that's Buddy Heald out there. It's a 40% volume three-point shooter who's flaring to this spot. I know where I got to go. I got to get here I got because that's the biggest threat. I've got to take that away. Matherin, while a rookie, he's operating in a whole heap of space out here, right? 
You've got Nurk on the backside, the on the weak side dunker spot. Uh, he's got to occupy Miles Turner because at this point in time, Miles Turner has whooped Nurk's ass. Now, it's the fourth quarter, so it's winning time, and Nurk has stepped it up a ton. But I think at this point in time, Miles had 17 and nine and was going to work. Okay, so roll it. That pass fake opens up. Josh Hart goes, "Oh shit!" Nurk's like, "Well, I got a seal on Miles. If I step up here, he's gonna drop this off." Oops. And it's a great finish. Nemard was great in this game, but again, this is a this is a possession where Jeremy Grant is ruled as the guy who was scored on. All because there's a communication issue here. Because Grant's thinking, oh, I'm g- on this pass fake right here, he's thinking, I'm going to get to Matherin. Right? Draw it here. Oop. I'm going to get to Matherin. He's probably thinking Josh is going to stay here. And Ant will flip his hips and try and relocate with Heald, even though his back is turned. I would say that probably this action put Ant in the worst position. And maybe it was designed to do this, to make him make decisions. And this is, again, an, another situation where communication in short spans and why you have to be on a string and on the same page. Right? Because this happens. That split second, Josh takes the false step outside. Just watch nothing right here but Josh Hart's feet. Watch his feet, okay? Active, active, active stance. That pass fake on the false step. Right here. It's a great play by Nemhard. He's cooked. And Dame could be the help here. Dame could be the help here if he recognizes this right away. If he recognizes this right away, he could sit here and look to bloop, take the charge. Could. But he's also going to give the shooter the ability to relocate to the corner. Okay? Again, decision tree. Pass fake. Everyone bites. Nurk's like, ah, I'm not going to get to this shit. But is that a play that Jeremy Grant is responsible for? There's some discussion about Jeremy Grant as a help defender. Jeremy Grant is just a good defender. He's just a good defender. Cove is in a, was like it is and still continues to be help defender extraordinaire. Incredibly active in the passing lanes. I think he's like fifth or sixth in deflections again this year. Very, very, very active help side defender. Jeremy Grant is a good, good help defender, good on ball defender, a good in between defender. That's the thing is like I don't think he's I don't think he's particularly great at anything. I think he's good to very good at most things. He's a guy who can take on point guards and not have it be an issue and take on big wings. There's very few big-bodied apex wings outside of the Giannis's, LeBron's, who can physically bully Jeremy. Even though he has that, I think it's the, the ectomorph, like that long, lean body type, he doesn't get bullied very often. Now, Luka's an, it's a different cat. And LeBron, that's a different cat. Those guys are absolute loads. But one thing that Jeremy does, and we'll see it here in these videos as I come back to it, is that they're very he's very good as a trail defender when they soft switch or full switch. And it's it's very interesting. So let me flip back over here real quick. What's interesting about this play is, again, this was graded as a play where Jeremy Grant allowed a score. Because he's the primary defender here early on. Nemhard again. Miles Turner. Bloop. Just a little brush screen. This is a really, actually, really nice screen by Turner. He kind of grabs Grant here, a little bumps him and walks him down. You see Josh Hart. I want to make sure we get here. Nemhart, good shooter, rookie. Not really trusting much yet. But again, we'll go bloop. Right here at the level. Nothing too crazy. We're not, both guys aren't stepping up here 
and trapping, right? It's it's not Damian Lillard. But Grant switches, takes Miles Turner. Josh Hart stands up, maybe gets a little high, ah, hops down into his stance. Nemhart sees it, attacks that foot, attacks the space he just vacated. Miles Turner does a great job of just walking Jeremy Grant down to the paint and going, excuse me, sir, I am here to hold the living shit out of you. I am going to seal your brains out. And with the, this is a little bit of a, a, a Spain pick and roll action that's delayed. So you have what, for those that don't know, Spain is a screen, the screener action. So it's a little delayed, but you have one screen here, bloop, Turner on Grant. What you're going to see here, as I believe it's Matherin, is going to step up here and attempt to screen uh, Josh Hart. Right? Excuse me. Clear my screen. It turns a little weird because they switched it. And, he's, and he goes, oh, okay. Well, then I'm just going to screen Grant's uh, Turner's man here. Or excuse me, it, it was Turner. Hart was on Turner, but they switched it. I'm going to screen Turner's man, who is now Jeremy Grant, right? So he's now coming here. And as we roll it forward, bloop. Miles sees what's going on. He's like, ah, we're going to vacate that. Because what was probably going to happen is on this play, that back pick that was going to be a screen the screener here, was going to turn into a situation where now Turner is going towards the rim. Hello, right here with this little guy. Mr. Six foot two, Damian Lamont, Ollie Lillard on the 6'11", 7 foot Miles Turner. Match blouses. That's what they're thinking. Instead, and this is where all plans, you know, everybody has a plan until you get hit. Well, this wasn't necessarily getting hit, but it was an opportunity and Miles realizes what's going on. As we get here, he gets bumped into the screen. Dame's worried about uh, Shooter here lifting above to the three-point line. So he's kind of grabbing and hesitate, and trying to hold him from getting to that spot. I don't think he can necessarily see what's coming down here. Okay? And in that vein, once he realizes it's too late, and Miles has grabbed and hooked the ever-loving bejesus out of Jeremy Grant. And at this point in time, he can just sit there and watch. Bloop. Okay. Again, I ask, what happened on that play? Is it bad communication? Is it bad scheme? Is it bad coaching? Is it bad personnel? Or is that an an opponent making an adjustment live on the fly? Because I can guarantee you this, Miles Turner did not go into that play thinking, I'm going to turn this into a wall-off situation and basically take two defenders as out of and uh, two defenders as one person out of the play. But that's what happens in the basketball. It's not scripted. You have an idea. That's what so much of this is about. You have ideas and concepts, but they evolve and they change and one counter triggers another counter, which triggers a counter to the counter. And that's what makes basketball so beautiful, right? Is that stuff. It, this, these are the things that I look for on the rewatch. And for those that don't know, I rewatch every game. I rewatch every game. At least once, sometimes twice. Depends on what I'm looking for. <laughs> Evan James. Nurk should do that every play. Two players out. Take two players out during a screen. That'd be great. Actually, Nurk is really good when he realizes that that kind of play is coming. He is, him and Brooke Lopez are two of the best at just getting huge. Robin, too, when he's out there. At just getting huge, getting their arms out wide, and making it look like, hey, I'm boxing out for this rebound. Don't mind me. And basically, like, fish netting three people. It's, it's really tremendous stuff. I love it when it happens. But let's get back to the video here real quick, because like I said, I have like 38 clips, so I'm just going to let a couple play through. I'm just going to talk over the talk over the top of them. Um, scramble play. 
Nobody knows who's guarding what. They kind of effectively get to where they need to. Jeremy Grant's on your weak side help. Ants on ball here. Does a pretty good job pestering. Shaden recovers Reeves. Ah, we're not really worried about Austin Reeves. Jeremy Grant. Oh, oh, what the hell happened here? Is this Jeremy Grant's problem? I don't think so. I think Shaden makes a boo-boo. He get a little, little overplay from the youngin. Little overplay from Shaden. Oh, gotta get down. Reeves says, "Ha <laughs> ha, gotcha, bitch." Snaps it back. Gets Shaden to relax ever so slightly. Stands up, and then Reeves attacks. Look at Shaden's feet. Look at the spot that he's in. Just rookie stuff, right? Stands up for a split second. He just, ah, I got you. Shaden takes a bad angle right here, and instead of fighting to contest this angle, Shaden needs to be, if we're talking about level, this is the angle he needs to be on. Actually, it's a bad drawing. This is the angle he needs to be on, on the floor, when Reeves gets here. Right? Because once he gets here and he's flat, once he's flat right here, he can turn this. This hip needs to be here. And that's just a rookie. That's what that is. And so you, I saw some people say, oh, Reeves is cooking. Well, mistakes get made. Also, players make plays. And then right here, Nurk's got to deal with Anthony Davis. He's like, oh, you're kidding me. I got to bail back here? Grant's like, I can't get here. Like, not, not that quick. Like, you got to. And as a defender, even if you're beat, run back a little bit. Even if you're beat, you can help your team out, teammates up, out so much by just giving them a second. And once Sharp does this, and he slides and bumps him, He's so far behind the play, his athleticism could allow him to get back into it. But if he had fought with him for another step or two, maybe Nurk gets down. Maybe Grant can slide over. But because of that, you can see the reaction from Grant and Nurk. Oh, okay. Not great. So we get the next play to load up. There we go. This is really good because this talks, I want to get into this. This is Jeremy Grant guarding a guard in trail position, right? So he knows he's got Reggie, Reggie Jackson here. He knows he's got, with Zubach on the floor, right? He knows that Nurk is going to 100% be in drop because nobody cares about Zoo anywhere out here. Zoo can do whatever he wants out here. No one cares. So... Nurk is playing deep drop, which means his ass is going to be anchored right here. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Not going anywhere. Okay. Now, Jeremy's playing over the top right now on 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 uh, Reggie. He takes a bit of a false step right out of the gate. Little jab step back, load, and he doesn't false step this. He goes straight. Simple little footwork thing. Watch Reggie's back leg kick back. And instead of back and then using this as the explode foot, like the plant foot here, he drives this foot up. That little thing, that little bit of footwork is what gets the initial separation. Boop. Now Jeremy's in trail. But he knows he's got center field. Like, I ain't got to worry about this. Reggie's like, Shh, yeah, he's really big. I'm not going to get in there. Josh is there to take away the Euro. Uh, I think it's Justice on the backside. Just, nah, I'm going to pull up here. Now, Jeremy, all 6'9", of his long-ass arms. Bloop! See ya! Unfortunately, bad miss leads to offensive rebound and a reset. Okay, now kick it to the middle of the floor. Once the ball's in the middle of the floor, it's the most dangerous. You've got a couple different actions going on right now. Josh is not worried about Amir Coffee. Why? Because he's Amir Coffee. He's decaf. Right? The threat... Again, is Reggie. Okay? So, Reggie on the reset. Interesting here. Now it's an empty side pick and roll. And Zoo set some damn good screens. So, but again, without knowing what's going on in this play, the interesting thing about this is if you flip this at all, you're going to have Zoo, when he sets this screen here, he either sets it 
and Grant gets stuck, and Reggie is able to step out over top, and then he can do what he wants, which is either pull up three, attack this open space in here. You can see Josh is playing way off. Oh, hi. To help, for exactly this reason. Because if Zoo does get here and Nurk has to step up, let me go ahead and clear all of this. If Nurk has to step up after this screen, what ends up happening is now Zoo is to go uh, full wide receiver. If I'm even, I'm leaving. Once Zoo is sets this screen, he can now curl to the rim and there's no help. Why? Because the corner is empty. This is why I love when the Blazers run empty corner pick and roll with this being Dame and this being Nurk. Because it puts them in a very advantageous position for making a defense make decisions. Okay? Let's see what they get out of it. There's the screen. Jeremy does a great job here of realizing that he is trying to flip this real quick and he's trying to get back down, down court. Plays over the top, plays catch. Just a damn good shot. Look at this. Full speed. Trail, help, contest. Absolutely eats crap. Watch Reggie. Watch nothing but Reggie. Great touch. Absolutely gets crushed. Gets absolutely crushed. Bad defense? Or great shot? Because the first defensive possession was good. The first possession, the defensive defensive possession was great. Jeremy played it over the top, uses his length, trail defense, gets the block. Problem is, he blocks too hard, goes off the glass, a scramble drill, reset, they kick it out, empty side, pick and roll. Reggie feels Jeremy get over the top again. Jeremy knows he can be aggressive in that exact position because he's got Nurk playing center field behind him. And Reggie does a tremendous job of finishing. Process, process, process. Is there something faulty in the process there? Did, it, did Jeremy Grant do something egregious? Or did Reggie Jackson make a hell of a floater? I bet you if Chauncey is watching this, he's not sitting there going, you've got to do this, this, and this better. I don't think that's a play that he's beating them over the head over. Maybe he tells Jeremy not to take that, be better about not taking that false step. Maybe don't overplay the aggressiveness of over the top coverage. I don't think so, but certainly that could be out there. Let's see what else we got here. All right. On to the next. Hey, look. It's the same play. I must have loaded it in there twice. Try that again. Hey, there we go. A little Cleveland action. What do we got here? <coughs> we do have the carpet jerseys. All right. How many Blazers are... This is, again, I think is an, another important thing to watch. 17 seconds. How many players are involved in the action? One, two, and three. Okay. You got Nurk. You got Jeremy. I think that's, I think it's Dame. I think. Can't, can't quite tell. We'll run it real quick. Nope, Justice. Okay. So Justice, so you've got three of your four best defenders, probably, in the action. Okay? There's a, this is like almost a shell game. For anybody's ever seen uh, or, or, or been to Coney Island, right? Look where everybody starts here. Look where the action, look where all of the action starts when they come down the court. Okay, so right now you've got Mitchell here, right? Bloop. Mitchell here. Mobley is going to flare out to the corner. Okay, Garland is going to come in here. Jerry Allen. Bloop. That's all your your actions right away. This is your your weak side floor or uh, ball side uh, floor spacer. That's pulling Ant all the way out here, right? Okay. So that's where we're at. Initial action here. Doot, 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 doot. Jarrett comes in and flips that screen, even though it looks like the angle that Jared Allen is coming in at originally is like 
maybe he's setting a little something here for Evan Mobley. And then he goes, ah, no, I'm not. Tricked you. I'm going to flip this screen, and I'm going to put this on the backside of Justice Winslow. Just is like, oh, okay. Now Nurk's got to realize that's Donovan Mitchell. Uh, I can't be in drop, so this is the difference, right? Nurk can't be here. Why? Because he's got DG at 40-ish feet, and he's got Donovan Mitchell at 35, right? Nurk can't be in drop. So he sees what's going on here and knows that Justice is going to try to fight through this. Fight and recover, fight and recover. Nurk's not all the way up at the level. Right? So now we've gone through one screen, rescreen, just enough of a chip just to get. Now Donovan Mitchell's got to lift up. Now we get into the DHO. This action from Darius Garland coming in brings Jeremy in. Now Donovan Mitchell is coming around this side as Jared Allen is ready to bloop right here. Right? Okay. Again, Jared Allen is setting the screen. Donovan Mitchell is rejecting the screen. Jeremy Grant is prepared to go into this screen. Jared Allen is a fantastic screener. Fantastic screener. Right? Donovan Mitchell is one of the best scorers in the game right now. Justice can't really help here. Why? Because he's got DG, who is basically baby Damian Lillard. Okay? So as we let this play... Jeremy's Jeremy's got to play over the top. He's got to play in trail. To uh, Ant's um, credit, Ant has already recognized what's going on, and he has left that corner, and he has come in to do what we talked about earlier when we were talking about Dame on that quick pass against the Spurs. If Dame recognized that a split second earlier, he could get there and maybe attempt to take a charge, right? Wrong. <laughs> why because this is one of the best scorers in the league and he's coming off a catch downhill against a scrambling defense that has been screened once twice three times step up four times and now you've in through that process you have created that channel again that channel to drive through and now Josh has helped in. He's not necessarily worried about Evan Mobley as this great corner three-point shooter. It's the thing that Evan has to hasn't really developed yet. And has moved in, right? But in doing so, <clears throat> all of this action, because of the threat of Donovan Mitchell above the three-point line, because of the threat of Darius Garland above the three-point line, Nurk can no longer be in drop to help to play center field. So what does that leave? That leaves six foot four Anthony Simons and six foot five Josh Hart on the backside of the play as the help against one of the premier scoring guards in the league. And Ant is, does what he needs to do, tries to get there and take the charge. Donovan Mitchell just hits him with a nasty, nasty ass euro step. Yeet! Josh Hart reaches in, trying to get a little piece, like, oh man. What? Chart, no, ah, try to get a piece, no. And I'll ask again, who's at fault? Who's at fault for what happened here? Or is this another transcendent player making a great play? Like the Reeves one, that is a blown assignment from Shaden Sharp. It's rookie stuff. This is just the flow of the game and why communication matters so much on the floor. If I'm going to be critical of anything for the Portland Trailblazers defensively this season is that they don't talk nearly enough. They don't talk. They aren't active hands. Shout out team mom. Active hands. Talking. And I'm not talking about acting hands in passing lanes. Talking with your hands. Communicating. One of the guys who's probably best at this on the team that I've noticed so far is Trenton Watford. Jabari in his limited minutes, he gets out there and he starts barking. When Nurk is at his absolute best, I'm not even talking about playing, but like his presence, a lot of it is with barking, talking, getting after guys. That's what I, I would be most critical of this team. More often than not, on most nights, the effort is there. There's not been nights that it hasn't. 
But there's so, so much that goes into every single possession. And when you're watching that live, your reaction is probably, oh, Jeremy got beat off the dribble. When he's there's been four screening actions in the span of two seconds, and you're worried about two elite scoring guards and a rim-running threat in Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell, Jared Allen that three-man action. And that's without them really having additional three-point help, which is why Josh Hart and Anthony Simons are there as help. They they both come down. Ant does the right thing. Tries to take a charge. Gets there. Gets above the line, out of the zone, under control. Donovan Mitchell just drills. Skills and drills, baby. Skills and drills. He takes that and says... Nah. Euro. Yeet! How much you can do about it? That's what elite players do. They do elite shit. And again, I don't need to make excuses for this defense because they've been bad at stretches. And when they make mistakes, they make mistakes. But I think there's so often times when elite players, players make plays that we tend to forget that when Damian Lillard or Anthony Simons or Jeremy Grant make tremendous plays that, oh, it's a great shot. You're not sitting there saying, oh, that defense was, was dog shit. You're just not. Jeremy Grant has had a couple plays this year in the post where he's hit a, a, a step back or a turnaround fade where the footwork has been exquisite and the defense has been perfect he just hits the shot the game that I really want to call out is the Denver game Nurk played yoke heady strong physical smart just loved it Jokic loaded up that trebuchet behind his head fired over the top and faded and hit and hit, and hit, and hit, and hit again. Nurk got him on that block. Got him on that block late in the game. It almost proved to be a game-winning type block. But it wasn't because Nurk was bad defensively. Jokic is a god offensively. And these guys that are at the very top of the offensive game... There's a reason why there's so few guys that are truly transcendent defensively without being monsters physically. Like, you look at the best defenders in the league, Kawhi before he was injured, uh, Giannis, Brooke Lopez, uh, Mikhail Bridges, Rudy Gobert, Marcus Smart, Draymond Green. Yes, they're very, very, very smart. High IQ but they also have individual athletic skills and physical size and prowess that allow them to succeed. Freakishly long arms, strong core from Draymond Green. Incredible instincts and size for Brooke Lopez, Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Mikhail Bridges might be the hardest guy in the NBA to screen. He's so freaking slippery. Chris Paul, even though he's aging, he's been so good defensively because his IQ is through the roof. He knows what you want to do before you do it. So he's able to get to spots and manipulate things and make it harder on you. That's the stuff that really comes together. That's why a guy like Jeremy Grant draws these assignments is that, yes, he can beat, get beat by Fox or Luka or Jamal Murray, blah, blah, blah. But he can also take those same players away. We just saw Reggie Jackson hit the floater on the second shot after getting blocked by Jeremy Grant. That's the thing, right? Let's watch a few more of these. Don't don't go down on me like that. Fix. There we go. Hey, there's Mr. Balmer. All right, 42-42, that weird Clipper game. All right, this one. This one, I think, is a bad one from Jeremy. Just on first watch. Okay? Hey, Bomber. All right. The frustrating thing about this one, this is out of timeout. Okay? 
man coverage. Drew comes up here. Oh. They're worried about Reggie here maybe a little bit more than I would be. But Drew is going into drop. This is, number one, a moving ass screen. Okay. Look where Zoo is right now. Okay. Let's go ahead and mark his feet. It is inside the line. Okay. This, the camera will move, so this isn't going to be the same. But as we roll it, that same line should probably be about right here. Right? Look where he's actually going. He's, he's stepped up and moved quite a bit. And Jeremy, to his credit, is trying to play this as tight as he can to get over in that trail position because Jeremy is so long and so active and athletic that in a trail position, as Reggie attacks downhill at Drew Eubanks, Grant can't get back, can get back, right? But Zoo does a great job of screening him out even longer. And now he's got Drew Eubanks, who I love because of his effort and his intensity and hustle and all those kind of things. But when you're running right at Drew's chest, he's not good. If this was, if Reggie was attacking from this side right here and Drew is the help, Drew is going to send Reggie's shot here. This X marks the spot. That's what's going to happen. Drew's going to load up off two feet and send Reggie's shot into the stands. But in attacking his chest, Drew doesn't have the same kind of ability. And he takes that one false step. And these are the, the micro things in the NBA. The second you feel that big, take that step, that false step back right here from Drew. Reggie already knows. He's open. Drew has opened his hips up this way. And he knows that this with this step, he can't get up and contest this. Not going to happen. Can't happen. Great floater. But is this a great screen by Zoo? Bad play by Jeremy? A little bit of both? Or is this personnel and great a great shot making from Reggie? Like, is this bad? Is this is is this like is is this something somebody would call bad screen navigation? Zoo again, one of the better screeners in the NBA. Is that bad screen navigation from Jeremy? Not great. I don't think it's terrible. Zoo does that. Yusuf Nurkic, he does that. It's a regular thing. What else we got here? Oh, we've already seen this one. No, don't do this. What are we on? Uh, there we go. Jalen Brunson. I guess I double-clicked a couple couple clips in there. Right? All right. So, let's see what we got here. Brunson, you want to talk about a heady player? Brunson. He does his ability to excel, decel, read your feet, read the defense. This is why he just got paid $100-plus plus million. Okay. Right out of the gate, early on in the next game on the road trip. Zone, or not, excuse me, not zone, not in zone, in, in straight man, Nurk play and drop. Why? Because, say with me, guys, Mitchell Robinson. Uh, on that previous clip, Thrandy is asking, should uh, Jeremy Grant have gone under that screen? It's an option, but I would imagine that the scouting report said to go over screens on Reggie. Force him into a driver. Don't let him walk into threes because he's the kind of guy who got help, who, who who can get hot. Uh, back to this play. All right. So you have. Let's see who's involved in the action right away. You can always kind of tell what's going to happen because you've got one, two, three here. Three guys that are likely going to be involved in the action. Nurk in drop. He's got old Mitch here. Match up here. Match up here. Okay. Let's roll forward. Okay, first little down screen is going to force Grant to fight through. Yeah, just kidding, go screen. Now, Nurk's getting low, right? Okay, what's going to happen here? Do I need to flip my hips and roll with Mitch? Oop, I always double-click it. Nope. But what does Jeremy do here? He hesitates for that split second, right? What's the action here? Ah! Uh, he thought maybe with that screen that maybe Brunson is going to try to 
get into this space. Maybe Justice is going to step here. Maybe he's going to have to be here. Ant's going to have to rotate up. Jeremy's going to have to X out to the corner. I would imagine that's what's going through his head. But instead, probably overthought it. And again, step back. Bobby Jack, whap, whap. The simple as that. Simple as that. A mild hesitation. Let's let's run it through from right here. Little ghost screen, mild hesitation, pull up three. That's the difference of the NBA. Again, let's play that again. There's nothing special about this but a half-second hesitation. A half-second hesitation for Jeremy Grant is all Jalen Brunson needs. Look at where he's at. Look how big Jeremy is. Look how far Jalen is, is already in. And Jeremy's like, ah, yep, I screwed that one up. I hesitated. How many of these did I double load in here? I screwed something up. Yeah, these got all screwed up in their processing. Double batched it. Okay. Brunson putting on a little bit of a master class here. All right. Really like this. Early offense here for the Knicks. 21 seconds. There's still got a guy not even cross the half court line. Brunson's like, okay. Sees this. A little bit of a Spurs early offense set where you've got uh, early pick Mitchell Robinson coming down. He's going to be able to attack this space behind him. I think that's quickly. Quickly can relocate here to the corner. R.J. Barrett, nobody's going to worry about him from three because he's shooting about as well as I do from three uh, in the NBA. Boop. Screen navigation. I don't think Jeremy does bad here. He knows Jalen Brunson's a hooper. He's a shooter, right? Okay. Trail position. Nurk already in drop because it's Mitchell Robinson. He's not going to shoot anywhere outside of this area. This is where Mitchell Robinson is going to shoot. Nowhere else. Okay. So Nurk gets ready to play center field in between. Jeremy in trail position. Shaden worried slightly about um, quickly right here, and making sure he's not losing sight of Obi Toppin. Obi is a absolute threat to run this baseline as a dunker spot and look for the lob. Instead, you get a wrong foot, leaning, fading floater at full speed. Whoop! This is, this is super heady. Again, little, little things once you get the, if I'm even, I'm leaving, okay? Jeremy is in, again, we talked about it, trail position. Mitch, his roll gravity is going to make Nurk kind of play in between. And what Jalen Brunson does is he attacks that foot and that space. And when he gets about here, he's going to stop. And in doing so, he puts Jeremy Grant directly on his back. And with that, he is able to keep Grant from getting up and contesting. He can't load his legs right here. Boom. In doing that, look at where Jeremy Grant is. Look at his shoulders. Grant's shoulders here. Brunson's shoulders here. It's too late. That's just, those are the little, little things of the NBA. Grant takes a good angle on the pick and roll. Jalen Brunson is so fast that he's able to create momentary separation. And as soon as he realizes that he can't, that Jeremy Grant can't get there in time just to double down on it. He stops a little bit, goes lefty, cash, and one. Brilliant stuff. Brilliant stuff. Love, I mean, it's, it's, it's great. All right, here we go. Oh, let me go in there. This is one of the few zone plays. We got a little zone in here. So, 2-3, Ant and Grant up high. Nurk in the middle. Who we got on the backside? Nas? Nas. No? Yeah, Nas. Uh, Hart uh, on the weak side. So right out of the gate... See who we have on the floor for the Cavs. So you've got Jared Allen, uh, Chetty Osmond, Darius Garland, Dwe Dean Wade. I can't see who that is in the corner right away. Uh, Isaac Okoro, who you're not 
really worried about as a shooter. Dean Wade, worrying about as a shooter. Because right now, all the attention is being paid to Darius Garland. Because that's the biggest threat on the floor. So you've got, boop, eyes here. It's always different from what I'm looking at versus what you guys are looking at. I draw off the other screen. Eyes are there, right? Nas is seeing this. Ant has to cover some ground here. So, good reaction from Nas. Once the ball is moving right away. Whoop, dart over. Okay. Stunt. Just a split second. If Okoro was really paying attention here, he could have... Whoop, back door. But that's just a, a timing thing, cutting thing. But as we roll it through, Ant has sagged over. Now we're over here. Hart has extended as Chetty Osman has left the corner. Vacated that space. Josh Hart is now stepping up. Okay. Again, this is just kind of the actions of each one as we see them. All right, now we're going to get the pick and roll. In zone coverage, right? You can tell what they're trying to do here is that Jeremy Grant is 100% playing chase. Here, would you stop? Getting into trail position. letting Funneling everything to Nurk's chest. Allen doesn't roll very hard. He sees that Ant is stepping in here. Okay. Right? Nurk saying, I'm going to deny with my hand, deny with my hand. What you have on the backside is a little action here. Dean Wade cutting through. That forces Nas to sink in from here. The Blazers, again, do not care for Isaac Okoro in the corner. Okay? What do you get here is Jeremy probably doesn't get back quick enough. Or he thinks that perhaps there's a tag situation where I don't think that's necessarily what, the, what anybody was anticipating happening, but perhaps he does. Perhaps he thinks that what's going to happen here is that Ant is going to step up. Nurk is going to retreat. Nas is going to fill in the corner, and they're going to get back into their 2-3, where Jeremy will replace on the opposite side with Jared Allen coming down this way. It's the only thing I can think because he hesitates for the split second and it turns into, ah, crap. And then Garland realizes, and again, when you're talking about a 2-3 zone, the space you want to get into the prime real estate is right here. And where does DG get to? That's a soft spot. You get the ball into the zone and good things happen. And when you get those good things happening... Now the defense starts getting a little concerned. They get a little confused. DG straight into the step back. Clear. There we go. Cash. All right. We're now about an hour and a half into this. And I've covered, like, what, 10 plays? 12 plays? This is... These are the things that I watch on a replay. I don't have to kind of diagram that stuff because those are the things I'm already watching for. And what we didn't spend a lot of time on was a ton of the off-ball actions or the things not involved in the immediate actions. There are things that you will watch or see the first time through. There's more that you will see in the second time through the third or the fourth, or if there's something or a singular player that you're watching only that will become more and more prominent the more film that you watch. I hope this is something that you guys really like. If not, I just won't do them anymore. Um, and I'm not even talking about the views, but if there's, if there's a core group like 40, 50, 60, 100 people who really love this stuff, I will make a concerted effort to do at least one of these a month. And what I will probably do is take submissions. What do you want to see? What do you want to look at? What are questions that you have? Because more than anything, I want to have discussions. I want to ask you guys questions. I want to entertain the questions that you guys have so that we can get smart. Like, I've watched a lot of film. I've watched more film than probably anybody not working in the NBA for the most part. 
10 plus years of, of watching a lot of replays, I still know nothing compared to the guys here who do this for a living. Uh, Steve Jones Jr., who did do this for a living, was an assistant coach, was a video guy, um, Snapper Jones' son, you guys have known him if he's been on the show before, he will be hopping on with us here in a couple weeks. And one of the things I'm we're going to talk about uh, with the Blazers is watching film because he's a guy who did this for a living. And I want us to be smarter as a community. I want us to ask questions. I want people to teach each other. And there's things that I don't know. There's a ton of things that I don't know. I'm never going to sit here and tell you I know everything. It's what I'm asking you, what do you guys think? I have my thoughts. But I want you guys, to, when you're watching the game, to watch about it, think about it, have questions about it differently than X, y equals, X plus Y equals Z. Because I, so much of the game of basketball is not black and white. It's not. There's significantly more of it is gray era, gray area. And so much of that comes about because of the absolute pristine level of skill that players in the NBA demonstrate today. And I think we're so in tune to playing video game binary reactions, 2K of I stopped here, win there, when there's so much more at hand. So I want to dive into a few more of these throughout the season. Um, as you can tell, we're an hour and a half in already. Uh, there's a lot that goes on and goes into this stuff. I can probably be better about speeding some of this up, but this is this is the first one. Anton says, I have a big question. Does our defense have a bigger upside with Nurk or more small ball? As the roster is currently constructed, the best defense they can probably put on the floor includes use of Nurkic. Probably. But that's over an 82-game season and not in the playoffs. In the playoffs, depending on the matchup, if you're not playing against Jokic or Embiid, if you're playing, or even a Phoenix... If unless you need a true big, I would say the Nurk. Because their small ball lineup, I have not seen them with Gary yet. And what that could do for the ability to stop primary ball handlers, let Jeremy work as your quasi small ball center or justice, whoever you end up being, your rim protection is going to be going to degrade. But if you're literally able to switch everything across and you can, um, you can keep from being matchup hunted. It'll be interesting to see how that goes, but I, I would say right now their base defense in the regular season is probably going to be best with Yusuf Nurkic because without him, they don't they don't have a way to contain drives, either as a rim protector, a rim deterrent, or the ability to just funnel things away. They're just not big or long enough consistently up and down the lineup. They had they had an OG and an OB. If they ran a Dame Ant, OG, Justice, Grant... That small ball lineup, you're cooking with gas because you've got some physicality. You've got some point of attack. You can hide Dame and Ant, to be honest. I think Dame's competitive on most matchups. I think Ant is getting better. Uh, I would I would worry a little bit about the rim protection uh, if you're talking about a team that's full of like great rebounding, but I think ultimately that's where, uh, where I'd fall with that stuff. So uh, I'm going to get out of here on that. Thank you guys so, so, so very much. I appreciate you. Remember, like, rate, review, subscribe, do all the stuff, whether you're watching live here on the uh, live show or you're watching on the replay. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this. I'll we'll come back again. I'll, like, I'll try to gather some questions and uh, maybe have a little bit more around this going into next time. But uh, go enjoy the night. And uh, just a heads up, uh, programming-wise, for tomorrow night's watch party, it will be open to the public. I will not be there. Brandon will be there to, post, to host it, though. So, um I don't know, maybe he'll bring in dirt or something. We'll, we'll figure something out. But uh, have a wonderful, wonderful night. Take care. Talk soon. Bye.